Section seventy three of In the Nursery of My Book House. Recording by Julia Niedermeyer. In the Nursery of My Book House. Edited by Olive Bobre Miller. The Cock, the Mouse, and the Little Red Hen by Felicity Lefebvre. Once upon a time there was a hill, and on the hill there was a pretty little house. It had one little green door and four little windows with green shutters, and in it there lived a cock and a mouse and a little red hen. On another hill close by there was another little house. It was very ugly. It had a door that wouldn't shut, and two broken windows, and all the paint was off the shutters. And in this house there lived a bold bad fox, and four bad little foxes. One morning these four bad little foxes came to the big bad fox and said, Oh, father, we are so hungry. We had nothing to eat yesterday, said one, and scarcely anything the day before, said another. The big bad fox shook his head, for he was thinking. At last he said in a big gruff voice, On the hill over there I see a house, and in that house there lives a cock. And a mouse, screamed two of the little foxes. And the little red hen, screamed the other two. And they are nice and fat, went on the big bad fox. This very day I'll take my sack, and I will go up that hill, and in at the door, and into my sack I will put the cock, and the mouse, and the little red hen. So the four little foxes jumped for joy, and the big bad fox went to get his sack ready to start upon his journey. But what was happening to the cock, and the mouse, and the little red hen all this time? Well, sad to say, the cock and the mouse had both got out of bed on the wrong side that morning. The cock said that the day was too hot, and the mouse grumbled because it was too cold. They came grumbling down the kitchen, where the good little red hen, looking as bright as a sunbeam, was bustling about. Who'll get some sticks to light the fire with? she asked. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. So off she ran to get the sticks. And now, who'll fill the kettle from the spring? she asked. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said little red hen. And off she ran to fill the kettle. And who'll get the breakfast ready? she asked as she put the kettle on to boil. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. All breakfast time the cock and the mouse quarreled and grumbled. The cock upset the milk jug and the mouse scattered crumbs upon the floor. Who clear away the breakfast? asked the poor little red hen, hoping they would soon leave off being cross. I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. So she cleared everything away, swept up the crumbs and brushed up the fireplace. And now, who'll help me to make the beds? I shan't, said the cock. I shan't, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen, and she tripped away upstairs. But the lazy cock and mouse each sat down in a comfortable armchair by the fire and soon fell fast asleep. Now the bad fox had crept up the hill and into the garden, and if the cock and the mouse hadn't been asleep, they would have seen his sharp eyes peeping at the window. rat a tat rat a tat the fox knocked at the door. Who can it be? said the mouse, half opening his eyes. Go and look for yourself if you want to know, said the rude cock. It's the postman, perhaps, thought the mouse to himself, and he may have a letter for me. So, without waiting to see who it was, he lifted the latch and opened the door. As soon as he opened it, in jumped the big fox. Oh, 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 squeaked the mouse, as he tried to run up the chimney. Doodle doodle doo, screamed the cock, as he jumped on the back of the biggest armchair. But the fox only laughed. And without more ado, he took the little mouse by the tail and popped him into the sack and seized the cock by the neck and popped him in too. Then the poor little red hen came running downstairs to see what all the noise was about, and the fox caught her and put her into the sack with the others. 
Then he took a long piece of string out of his pocket, wound it round and round and round the mouth of the sack, and tied it very tight indeed. After that he threw the sack over his back, and off he sat down the hill, chuckling to himself. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so cross, said the cock, as they were bumping about. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so lazy, said the mouse, wiping his eyes with the tip of his tail. It's never too late to mend, said Little Red Hen, and don't be too sad. See, here I have my little work bag, and in it there is a pair of scissors, and a little thimble, and a needle, and thread. Very soon you will see what I'm going to do. Now the sun was very hot, and soon Mr. Fox began to feel his sack was heavy, and at last he thought he would lie down under a tree and go to sleep for a little while. So he threw the sack down with a big bump, and very soon fell fast asleep. Snore, 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 went the fox. As soon as the little red hen heard this, she took out her scissors and began to snip a hole in the sack, just large enough for the mouse to creep through. Quick, she whispered to the mouse, run as fast as you can and bring back a stone just as large as yourself. Out scampered the mouse and soon came back, dragging the stone after him. Push it in here, said the little red hen, and he pushed it in in a twinkling. Then the little red hen snipped away at the hole, till it was large enough for the cock to go through. Quick, she said, run and get a stone as big as yourself. Out flew the cock and soon came back quite out of breath, with a big stone which she pushed into the sack too. Then the little red hen popped out, got the stone as big as herself and pushed it in. Next she put on the thimble, took out her needle and thread, and sewed up the hole as quickly as ever she could. When it was done, the cock and the mouse and the little red hen ran home very fast, shut the door after them, drew the bolts, shut the shutters, and drew down the blinds and felt quite safe. The bad fox lay fast asleep under the tree for some time, but at last he awoke. Dear, dear, he said, rubbing his eyes and then looking at the long shadows on the grass. How late it is getting. I must hurry home. So the bad fox went crumbling and croning down the hill, till he came to the stream. Splash! In went one foot. Splash! In went the other, but the stones in the sack were so heavy that at the very next step down tumbled Mr. Fox into a deep pool. And then the fishes carried him off to their fairy caves, and kept him a prisoner there so he was never seen again. And the four greedy little foxes had to go to bed without any supper. But the cock and the mouse never crumbled again. They lit the fire, filled the kettle, laid the breakfast, and did all the work, while the good little red hen had a holiday, and sat resting in the big armchair. No foxes ever troubled them again, and for all I know, they are still living happily in the little house with the green door and green shutters, which stands on the hill. End of section 73 Recorded by Julian Niedermeyer, Vienna, Austria